the Fandango de Huelva has long been a mystery to me as a guitarist. I easily understood the basic compass as I explained it in the first video, but I always felt that I was missing something, that the guitar was doing something different, something sometimes disconnected from that basic compass, like floating over it, almost as if the guitar was playing in a different compass. And guess what? I was right. There was definitely something I didn't understand, but I ended up understanding it thanks to the guitar itself. <laughs> Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you dance flamenco, you play guitar, you sing, you play palmas, you play cajon, or you just love it and you want to better understand how it works, let's continue to explore the compass de Fandango de Huelva. And it's time to talk more about the guitar. If you're not a guitarist, don't run away because here I will explain many, many important things about this compass and that also work for many other flamenco compasses. In the first video, I explained to you the basic cycle of the Compass de Fandango de Huelva and why it's better to count it in 6 beats rather than in 12 beats or 3 beats. If it's not clear to you, go and check that first video. If everything is clear, here we go. At first, my feeling with the guitar was that many elements I was playing were not matching with the basic cycle, the basic compass, that something was moved out, shifted, strange. For example, this basic variation on the compass. Or even the basic compass. Can you feel it? Can you feel that something is strange? I mean, obviously it works because it's Fandango de Huelva, but go back and listen carefully and even slow down the video if necessary and pay attention to the accents of the guitar and the accents of the compass loop. They usually coincide in the first beat of the compass every six beats, but then many times it sounds like they go their own separate ways. If you've been listening to Fandango de Huelva for a long time, so maybe not, maybe it sounds good like this, nothing is strange. But if you do find something weird, like I did at the beginning, don't worry, it's not you. It's because this compass is very special. I want to share with you what I discovered, but I also want to share the process it took to figure it out. So imagine you've never heard Fandango de Huelva in your life you don't know what it is and you have no idea of its compass. And you hear this. Or this. And I ask you in these phrases, where are the accents? If I ask you, how would you play the palmas on top of this? Where would be the accents? I really doubt that you would spontaneously play palmas in three feel like this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. As the basic compass suggests. I set up El Tito in three beats, okay? 120 BPM and listen to this again. One, two. This is really not the most natural for me. But now if I set up El Tito in two beats, it becomes much more logical. One, two, one, two. that it sounds much more logical. Everything is matching. I hope you agree. At least I agree with myself. And trust me, it's not that often. 
doing this exercise, just trying to just listen to the phrase, what the music itself was telling me, I discovered that many, many elements of the guitar are accentuated in two beats and not in three. But from the start, we've been told that Fandango de Huelva is in three beats or six beats or 12 beats, but never in two beats. So what's happening? I confirm that the Fandango is still in six beats. Okay, that doesn't change. But remember, in one of my videos, I explained how we can build any kind of cycle with two basic building bricks, two basic Legos, three beats or two beats. So if we need six beats, basically we have two different possibilities. Either this two times three beats or this three times two beats. So you can feel a six beat cycle in two different ways. Like one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, one, two, one, two. Both of them make six beats, but the way you feel it in three feel or in two feel changes everything. The structure, the articulation of the cycle is different. The dynamics are different. The pulse we mark or we feel at the ground level, I explained this in another video too, is different. When I play my falsetas, my variations, or even the basic guitar compass on a two feel six beats compass, everything makes more sense rhythmically. And when I play them on a three feel compass, many things happen. The first beat is always the first beat, but then the rest of the accents are in different places. There are many shifts, crossings between the accent of the guitar, the accent of the melody and the accent of the compass behind. Sometimes they match and sometimes they don't. And that's strange and beautiful. The compass is neither in three feel nor in two feel, but both at the same time. <laughs> This compass is like a three-dimensional rhythmic cycle. One dimension is the basic cycle, that of the red Legos in three feel, while many guitar and even cante elements go in the second dimension, in two feel, that of the yellow Legos. And the two layers, the two dimensions, unfold at the same time, creating rhythmic crossings. Both dimensions start with an accent on the beat one, but then they separate, they accentuate different beats for a moment. The red layer accentuates one and four, while the yellow layer accentuates one and three and five. And they will eventually align again on the next beat one. Technically, we call this a crossed meter or polymeter, but we don't really care about the name. What is important to know is why this compass is much more interesting than a simple three beat cycle. The superposition of these two layers, these two dimensions, creates something new, something unique. A new third dimension that needs six beats to fully unfold. So maybe the best way to put these Legos together is this way, in three dimensions. If we extract only the accents of the two layers, we have four accents on one, three, four, and five. The basic Palmas pattern doesn't mark the three, only one, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe for clarity, because four accents for six beats, it would be a lot. This pattern keeps the three feel in the first half of the compass and creates an interesting asymmetry in the second part of the compass with the five. Now we know where the five comes from. The five is very, very important because it gives its specificity, its identity to this compass. It makes us identify it immediately compared to a normal three beats compass. It's not just an extra accent that came like that randomly or just one day somebody decided, let's put an accent there because it's nice. The five is the expression of a parallel dimension underlying the basic three beats compass unfolding at the same time. The five is a trace of yellow in a red world and it gives a new color because when you blend red and yellow, you obtain orange, right? That's why I use this orange Lego in the first video to put on five and nothing on six. I love this Lego so much. We'll talk more about this fifth beat in other videos because it is key in the accompaniment of the cante with dancing or guitar. So this basic Palmas pattern is like a two-dimension transcription of the three-dimension real compass, trying to express everything but just with Palmas. The guitar, however, is much better to express the 3D. 
the guitar is fascinating for this because why choose if you can have it all, if you can express everything at the same time? The basic three field rhythm, that of the red Legos, is expressed in a percussive way with golpes every three beats. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. But in parallel to that, there is a second rhythm, that of the yellow Legos, expressed by the harmonic bass. The chord changes, unfolding the Andalusian cadence. Four, three, two, one. Remember the four steps of the Andalusian cadence. This way. One, two. Combine both together and you obtain the basic Fandango de Huelva compass with the guitar. Amazing, right? This multidimensional aspect is really important in flamenco. You'll find it in many other palos, like for example, Burería, that we practiced a lot in this video. That's why we have to practice this so much and find the right sensation that it creates in our body. So try this, just take a very traditional toque por Fernando de Huelva, just a guitar solo like Aires Choqueros de Paco de Lucia and listen to it twice. First time with the palmas only in two and second time with the palmas only in three. Try all this and tell me in the comments how it feels. You realize that there are parts that go better in two and parts that go better in three. But we are always in this three dimensional world, like either in two, in three or both at the same time. If we think of this compass just in normal three beats, then we miss the essential aspect of this palo, its personality. If we lose sight of it, we risk falling into a simple one dimension three beats compass where all the melodic, rhythmic and melodic phrases are articulated in three. And it happens a lot. There are many toques, guitar solos that say Fandango de Huelva, but they are missing the point because they are mostly in three beats, sometimes between falsetas with the typical Fandango de Huelva compass, but that's not enough. This compass is another fine example of how flamenco mixes different rhythmic layers, different rhythmic sensation, creating rhythmic shifts with polymeters, bringing out new possibilities, new dimensions with new colors, new sonigete. And when you take a closer look at them, in fact, almost all the flamenco compasses have this three-dimensional aspect. And this is what makes them so interesting, just like in life. It's so much more interesting when things have different layers, different ways of seeing, different ways of understanding, of feeling, different possible point of view, different possible explanation. And when all of this connects and coexists, then it creates unique beings. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it could help. If it helps, you can also help me by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, share it to the world, and also go and visit flamencomaps.com where I explain my classes, my courses, and my way of teaching flamenco. I see you there. Till then, don't forget, learn flamenco, make it fun, make it different, make it your own, and play compass in three dimensions.